All right, we're back. All right, it's hello. It's like we never went anywhere. What? We like, totally... It's a different day, but we're wearing the same clothes, I swear. No, it's not. So if you saw <laughs> us, uh, probably should have been about a week ago, uh, we were here with an unboxing of a relatively new release. But today, we're here with another brand new release. What? That, let me just check my release date. Oh, notes check yep, it comes out today. <laughs> What if they watch it any day after the day that's went out? What if they're watching it any other day? Yeah. Then the, it came out the day this video went up. Fair. Here's what we got. So today we are taking a look at Lupin the Third the First. Not to be confused with Lupin the Thirst, uh, which if you have not seen it yet, <laughs> go check it out. <laughs> this uh, is a prequel, isn't it? I think so. I, I think know. this is a prequel. See, we're actually going to be taking uh, a bit of a unique approach, perhaps, uh, with this release. We're going to be opening it for you right now, and then we're going to go, we're going to pop it in, we're going to take a look at it, and we're going to come back and tell you what we thought about the movie. What do you think of it, Chester? And the reason that it's a bit of a unique approach is neither of us have, like, any experience with Luke the Third. So we want to know uh, if this is a proper prequel, how, how does it work for people who have no experience with the franchise? Who haven't watched 8,000 episodes of Luke and the Third. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have, uh, I have, uh, no prior experience. No. At all. Other than knowing that this was the, the first, the, this movie, not, not this movie. Right. But the, the, the Lupin. Castle of Kekwistro. Yeah, was the first, <laughs> Lupin the Third was the first to get fan subs, wasn't it? Oh, yes. I yeah, that's were... what I'm. I thought you were going to say The Castle of Cagliostro was Miyazaki's first feature-length film. Yeah, but nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about that. No, but I, nobody no. Talks about Miyazaki's Lupin. Lupin, Lupin was. Yes. The, the first Japanese anime. anime. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. The, oh, no, oh they're, show they're, they're, what? Show, show what has happened. Oh, no. Um, this happens sometimes. Um, it looks like we have the dual. Uh, Blu-ray and DVD release. Yes, yes. And the DVD decided to jump ship. Yes. And kiss the Blu-ray on the mouth directly. It looks like it has a uh, an artwork. Ooh. 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 What do we got? That's cool. Look at that. That's very cool. I, I I love I love that. That's become the standard thing. Me too. To, to have reverse me, artwork. Me too. I, I really <laughs> like that. I I I actually on all of our games that have reverse artwork, mm -hmm. I have. Flipped to the. Oops, this goes this way. <laughs> flipped upside down. I have flipped upside down to the um, uh, to the reverse artwork. I, yes. I don't know. I just like it. We should also probably mention that this is this is a release. Um, it came out last month on uh, digital download, but today it's out on uh, DVD and Blu-ray, and it's it seems that there is also a steelbook edition of it. Uh, that that is that is not the one that's here. This is the no. standard release. Yeah, this is the just um, and regular. It's, a re it's a release from Shout Factory and G Kids, who have been ever so gracious with this channel over the years. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I will say we have a picture yes. of what the steel. Oh yeah, looks the steel like book. the uh, bonus features include uh, interviews with the director and the Japanese cast, a uh, reunion of the English cast, uh, something called an animation breakdown, a CG model gallery. The yellow carpet premiere? Is that an in-joke with Lupin? I don't I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. Tell me in the comments. Smash that like button. Suplex that like button. Also suplex the like button. If, <laughs> if we're like failures at weaving. Uppercut the like button in that case. Roundhouse kick we the will, like button. We will know the difference. Yeah. We're gonna go, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at uh, Lupin the third, the first. I almost said the, the thirst the third again. <laughs> Um, and we'll get back to you on how this movie fares for people who have no experience with Lupin. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Catch you in a minute. Two hours later. We're back. So we're back. <laughs> it's after, been... Uh, it's approximately 93 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. Maybe 93 hours. So, we watched Lupin the Thirst. And what were your thoughts? What, what what do you think of this film? This glorious. I'm sorry. I'm I'm showing my bias. What did, what did you think? Of okay. So first of all, we I, I don't remember if we said this. So I'm gonna say it again just in case. Like call us 
fake fans, but this is a franchise that we have no exposure to whatsoever. So we wanted to take the approach of, okay, well, let's watch this potential reboot, you know, going on with absolutely no prior experience. How are we going to understand it? Are, like, are we going to be able to understand it? How are we going to connect with the characters? Like, things like that. So yeah. in terms of whether or not I feel like as somebody who has never like watched Lupin at all, mm -hmm. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> it was so much fun. It was. And I cannot speak for somebody who has watched Lupin and has like nostalgia for Lupin. I don't know how they'll feel. I have no idea. I don't either. I couldn't tell you because I am not that kind of person. As far as I've never seen it and I have no prior experience with these characters, like I really, really liked it. I thought they did a really good job of like fleshing out the characters, like just enough to make me be like, Oh, like maybe I do want to go watch Lupin yeah. now. <laughs> Honestly, I, I would say that was that was my biggest takeaway from it was mm -hmm. feeling like I want to look more into this franchise. Yeah. So in that in that way, I would say it is a good entry point for people who have never seen it before. Yes, I was gonna say that as well. It was just so much fun. Lupin's character was so much fun. Yes. Like, and honestly, like all of the side characters, like I felt like they had just enough yes. for me to be like. I understood kind of the relationship that Lupin had with them and maybe it, like it wasn't like super fleshed out or anything and like I don't really know why the the lady thief was there like I don't know exactly what she's doing and I don't know exactly how she's related but at the same time like I didn't I didn't need that mm -hmm. watching this movie like it all like was pretty seamless and I felt like I got what I needed yeah, In absolutely. terms of like characterization. Absolutely. Because it has the advantage of you knowing that these are all established characters and they have their pre-established relationships and everything. Mm -hmm. So you can go into it and not need a full fleshed out explanation of all their relationships like you're saying. Mm -hmm. But there is enough of that there that even as somebody who doesn't know how these characters are supposed to interact, mm -hmm. the like hexagonal how how they're all connected mm -hmm. it makes sense just from this like 90 minute movie <laughs> call me a fake fan because i constantly say lupin the third is my favorite thing in the world but i've not watched a single minute of it <laughs> no because you watched the one youtube lupin <laughs> hey that is comedy gold the study of true theology is the only way to find the truth about truth sass Source. Behave yourself. As a standalone film, this was fun. Yes. Like I was laughing, like I was enjoying myself. It like it, it's it's a little like you can totally tell like it has the uh, 007 influence. Mm -hmm. Um and like that's not necessarily like my favorite kind of movie, mm -hmm. but I appreciate like Eli really likes those kinds of movies. And like I appreciate that and and like the kind of shallow nature, mm -hmm. I suppose, of movies like that. I, I picked up on that in this movie. Sure. But I also know that, that that's coming from other, like, it's coming from a point of inspiration. And, yes. Yeah. And I would definitely say that this movie benefits from taking inspiration there, but then also being completely irreverent, irreverent about it. And all, to an extent, making fun of the tropes of, of that sort of film. Yes. Well, so would you recommend this to somebody who has never watched Lupin? Yes, 100%. Do you want to watch Lupin? Yes, I would absolutely recommend this for somebody who has no prior experience and who is maybe daunted by like the size of the manga or the anime. <laughs> As a new fan, it was fun. It was honestly like it was one of those things where if you're looking for a good family friendly movie that is also like going to be fun for adults like because there are definitely <laughs> some adult jokes in there but they're like, adult jokes i wouldn't have gotten as a kid i wouldn't have gotten as a kid so like i really feel like this is a really good movie like if you want to just have a, a good laugh mm -hmm. with your family or like with your significant other or just on your own because you know what it's totally fine to watch movies by yourself or with your cat or with your cat or, or your with all 18 of your cats it's totally fine that's also fair <laughs> And I am not saying that as a joke, I mean that. <laughs> no, if, if, if we, if our living circumstances were different, we would probably have at least 18. <laughs> at least. <laughs> as somebody who's never had any prior experience, I enjoyed it. And I think anybody without prior experience will enjoy it. Yes. I cannot vouch for it. If you have prior experience, 
how you're going to feel let, about this. Let us know. Yeah, tell it's, us because I'm curious. Yeah. Like, it, did, have you like do you have a nostalgia for Lupin? Mm -hmm. And then you watch this movie and you're just like, yeah. Or, or did you enjoy it? Was yeah. It great? Was it good? I don't know. I don't know what either. Do let us know. Let us know. Let us know in the comments below. What do you think, Chester? Why do we always say comments below? It's not like they're ever above. Why do we have to specify that they're below the video? What if the video is like posted on a site where the comments are above? Then... I don't think I've ever seen that. Though. I don't think I've ever seen that. Just Why does that have to be in the comments? Let us know. That's true. What if they want to... Email us. What if they want to send postage? To our P.O. box. <laughs> we, we don't, don't have, have a P.O. box. box. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>